Hi, everybody. In previous videos for Chapter 7, we talked about bad debt expense. We talked about the annual provision for bad debt expense. And we talked about the direct write-off method, which is not GAAP. And we talked about the allowance method, which is GAAP. And in the examples for, under that allowance method, we talked about JTEC company and JTEC estimates that 2,000 of its accounts receivable would be uncollectible. So we are given the amount of our bad debt expense. And we debited bad debt expense and credited the allowance for that $2,000 amount. But you're not always given the amount of bad debt expense. Sometimes you have to calculate the amount of bad debt expense. And that's what this video is about. And that's what the book talks about on pages 278 through 280 of your textbook. Under the allowance method, there are three ways to calculate the estimate of bad debt expense at the end of an accounting period. The first and easiest way is the percent of sales method. And that actually does calculate the amount of bad debt expense. You're going to take the amount calculated and you're going to debit bad debt expense for that amount and credit the allowance for that amount and you're done. It's quite easy. Example, Mystic Pizza Company had credit sales of $500,000 in X1. Based on past experience, management estimates that 0.7% of credit sales will be uncollectible as of December 31st, X1. This implies that $3,500 is the amount of bad debt expense. And it should be, that bad debt expense should be matched with revenue earned during the year. $500,000 times 0.7% equals $3,500. To prepare the annual provision for bad debt expense for Mystic Company, or Mystic Pizza then, we need to debit bad debt expense for the amount we calculated and credit the allowance for doubtful accounts for the amount we calculated. In other words, we calculated the debit to bad debt expense and we plugged the allowance for doubtful accounts for an amount to get the journal entry to balance. Another way of calculating bad, the allowance for doubtful accounts is the percent of receivables method. And in that case, you're going to apply a percentage or multiply a percentage times the balance sheet account accounts receivable. But when you do that, you are not calculating bad debt expense. What you're calculating instead is the correct ending balance in the allowance for doubtful accounts account. You're going to credit the allowance with an amount sufficient so that its ending balance reflects the correct estimated amount and you're going to plug bad debt expense with an offsetting debit. Let's look at an example. Superb Products had $40,000 of accounts receivable on December 31st, X1. The allowance for doubtful accounts has an unadjusted debit balance of $400. Experience suggests that 5% of accounts receivable will be uncollectible. This means that after adjusting entry to book the provision for bad debts, we want the allowance account to show a $2,000 credit balance. That would be $40,000 of accounts receivable times 5% equals $2,000. I did not calculate bad debt expense here. What I calculated is the ending balance in the allowance account. So let's look at that. The allowance for doubtful accounts has an unadjusted $400 debit balance. We just calculated that it should have, the account should have, a $2,000 
credit balance. I know it's a credit because the allowance for doubtful accounts is a contra asset account and the contra asset account has a normal credit balance. So I'm going to put in the $2,000 credit balance, which is the correct balance in the account as calculated. And the adjusting entry then has to be an amount sufficient to get this $400 debit to a $2,000 credit balance. What do we have to credit this account for to eat up that $400 debit and still have a $2,000 credit balance. And that amount is $2,400. $2,400 credit offsets that $400 debit and leaves a $2,000 credit balance in the account. And that is the amount of the journal entry. Credit the allowance for $2,400 and plug the bad debt expense to get the journal entry to balance. Debit, bad debt expense, 2400 Credit the allowance, 2400 One other method that can be used is very similar to the Superb Products example here. In Superb Products, we calculated the ending balance in the allowance account by multiplying accounts receivable times a percentage. This method simply refines that calculation, makes it a more accurate calculation. It's an estimate. It can never be 100% correct, but it's a better estimate than simply multiplying one percentage times accounts receivable as a whole. This method takes a look at the balance sheet, focuses on the accounts receivable, and then prepares an aging of accounts receivable schedule and calculates the aging blocks times a percentage. And remember that the older an account is, the higher the percentage of uncollectible uh, estimate would be. And we're going to do the same exact journal entry. We're going to Credit the allowance for doubtful accounts with an amount sufficient so that its ending balance reflects the estimated amount uncollectible. And we're going to plug bad debt expense with the offsetting debit. To make that a little bit clearer, let's look at an example. In your textbook, there is, on page 279, there is an aging of accounts receivable schedule for Musicland Company. And I have a copy of it here. This is on page 279 of your textbook. Musicland, Schedule of Accounts Receivable by Age, December 31st, 2019. This is the total amount receivable. Total receivables from all of their customers at December 31st, 2019 is $50,000. Musicland's accounting department has prepared this schedule for us. Of this $50,000, $37,000 is still current. The due date hasn't even come. Of this $50,000, $6,500 is past due, but not very much past due. It's only 1 to 30 days past due. So they're late, but they're not really late. In this column, $3,700 of this $50,000 is quite late. It's more than a month late, but not more than two months late. $1,900 is uh, more than two months late, but not more than three months late. And of the $50,000, 900 of it is more than 90 days past due. And remember that the older the receivables are, the less chance that will be paid. So we're applying a higher percentage uh, to the oldest accounts. You're not going to be asked to come up with those percentages. You're not going to be asked to come up with this schedule. But if you were asked to do this calculation 
and we're told that 40% of the oldest ones equals 360, 25% of this column is 475, 10% of this column is 370, etc. Then add up the amounts we feel that are not going to be collectible for each aging category, and the total amount of estimated uncollectible is 2270. That is the ending balance in our allowance account. So going back to our calculation, we do need to read the problem. The aging account for Musicland on page 279 shows the ending balance in the allowful, allowance for doubtful account should be 2270 as I showed you right here, 2270. Therefore, and then it says that if the allowance for doubtful accounts has an unadjusted credit balance of $200, prepare the annual journal entry to book the provision for bad debt expense. Well, here's that little $200 credit balance hanging over from last year. We know the correct ending balance ought to be 2270. What do we need to credit the allowance account to get this $200 credit balance to be a 2270 uh, credit balance? Well, it needs to grow by 2070. 200 plus 2070 brings that credit balance, unadjusted credit balance, up to the correct ending balance in the account of 2270. So we need to credit the allowance for doubtful accounts by 2070, and we need to plug the bad debt expense for the same amount, debit, just to get the journal entry to balance. So the correct journal entry is, you go ahead and write the journal entry, uh, pause the video, and then come back to check your answer. So the correct journal entry in this instance is debit bad debt expense 2070 and credit the allowance for doubtful accounts 2070. This is the amount we cal calculated. We plug bad debt expense with a debit to get the journal entry to balance. One last thing I'd like you to mention is there's a really good exhibit in your textbook on page 80. Uh, it's exhibit 7.10 and it's an example, an excellent, excellent summary of the three methods used to calculate bad debt expense uh, discussed above. I'll see if I can post some um, problems for you to work and practice problems. And that's the end of the video lectures on the Chapter 7, Bad Debt Allowance for Bad Debt uh, lectures. Talk to you later.